objects all the time and during every day of our lives. Your toothbrush, your airbrush, your coffee mug, your spoon, your smartphone, your keys. You use all of these objects before you leave your house and even before you start to work. Actually, this capacity to manipulate and know a lot of information about objects is unique in humans. If you think in an ordinary object, like a glass, you will find out that you know many things about glasses. For instance, you know where you might find the glass, how a glass looks like, even though there are different types of glasses with different colors, textures, shapes and materials. You know what the glass is used for, how to manipulate the glass, and you also know a bunch of extra information, like usually glasses are breakable. Well, this ability to manipulate objects was essential for the evolution of the human species, as dexterity was an important precursor of many high-level cognitive abilities. And because it was so important, we can see how the information of objects is organized in the brain. And we can see that because you and I have a neural circuit that is more active every time that you see an object. And this is what I have been studying. My goal is to understand how objects are organized in the brain. One hypothesis is that objects are organized based on, the, on their similarity. That means that objects that are more similar to each other will be, will be mapped closer in our brain. By contrast, objects that share less features and because of that are more dissimilar, they will be mapped far off each other in the brain. To study this, I used two methods. In the first method, I asked my completely naive participants to look for the differences between objects, say, a glass and a button, and they had to press the button when the object changed, while I was measuring their reaction times and accuracy. In the second method, I asked my participants to lay down in a magnetic resonance scanner so I can see which brain areas were more responsive to object changes. For now, in a very preliminary way, we found out that participants are slower and they make more mistakes to detect the change between objects that are more similar. By contrast, they are faster to detect a change in objects when they are more dissimilar, when they are more different to each other. And we are still trying to understand what that means in our brain. But why do I bother to study this? First of all, if this ability is exclusive for humans, at least in this extent, we need to understand where this ability came from. Then, if we understand how objects are organized in the brain, we can boost our understanding of motor diseases and future treatments. At last, if we, if we know how the brain works, we can replicate this information in artificial intelligence scenarios and we can attempt to copy the greatest machine ever, our brain.